ವಕ್ರತುಂಡ ಮಹಾಕಾಯ ಸೂರ್ಯಕೋಟಿ ಸಮಪ್ರಭಾ ನಿರ್ವಿಘ್ನ ಕುರು ಮೇ ದೇವ ಸರ್ವ ಕಾರ್ಯು ಸರ್ವದ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆನ್ ಬಿಹಾಫ್ ಆಫ್ ಪರಂ ಟೀಮ್ ಪರಂ ವೇದಾಂತ ಐ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಡ್ ಒನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಎ ಹಾರ್ಟಿ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ನೈನ್ತ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಶಾ a series aimed to lead us into a inward journey for discovery of inner strength and happiness today shrimati uh, dr ahalya will explain the final summary of geeta the lord's concluding remarks and sanjaya's concluding remarks from the 18th chapter moksha sanyasa yoga of bhagavad geeta this presentation is followed by a teaching quiz put together by shrimati vasumati shrimati vani baskar and shri shiv kumar the quiz is aimed to emphasize and reinforce the key aspects of the day's topics dr timapa hegde sir shall introduce and prepare us for the day's topics dr sandhya ravi shall chant and explain a shloka from narayaniyam written by bhattatri in the 5th, uh, 15th century uh, ad the mahima of narayaniyam is very well known it is said to possess miraculous power of healing illnesses both mental and physical just daily parayanam is supposed to bless the devotee with good health and vitality <clears throat> before handing over to dr sandhya ravi i would like to make an important announcement to commemorate and thank all our gurus guru purnima Uh, on guru purnima we shall be broadcasting a special celebratory session on monday the 3rd july do not miss joining us in celebration celebrating this memorable day and expressing our gratitude to our gurus now i request dr sandhya ravi to take over please padma dhamita mutta pitai padma yonihi ananta bhuma mamaro gharashin ಉತ್ತಾಪಿತ ಪದ್ಮಯೋನಿ ಓ ಡ್ವೆಲ್ವರ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಡ್ವೆಲ್ವರ್ ಆಫ್ ಗುರುವಾಯು ವಾತಾಲಯ ವಾಸ ವಿಷ್ಣು O thou of infinite glory, Ananta Bhuma, Mama Roga Rashin Nirundi, please pray eradicate my ailments. So it means, O Supreme Lord of incomprehensible powers, in this age known as Padma Kalpa, thou hast brought into existence the creator Brahma. O Lord Vishnu, who has manifested in the temple of Guruvayu, please eradicate my ailments. the next slide sir so this shloka is from the narayaniyam which is a great sanskrit epic of 1036 shlokas and it is considered to be the bhagavata saram the essence of the bhagavata purana it is composed by melvatur narayana bhattatri in the 16th century and it consists of 100 dashakams containing 10 or more shlokas or verses in each of the dasa so both as a poem and a devotional hymn the narayana occupies pride of place in the sanskrit literature there is a very interesting story associated with the composition of the narayana so bhattatri's guru who was pisharodi suffered from unbearable pain and bhattatri who was very devoted to his guru he prayed in deep sympathy he prayed to the lord that to lord krishna to transfer that pain to him thus relieving his guru of pain so krishna granted him this boon and bhattatri was crippled in this state he surrendered to lord krishna at the lord's feet in guruvayu and he composed the narayaniyam so throughout the narayaniyam the incarnations of vishnu are traced with piety and bhattatri transforms the episodes into solemn prayers which are steeped in bhakti so the central theme of narayaniyam is bhakti and this particular shloka which is the 13th one 
is from Dashatam 8. And it is a supplication to the Lord for relief from illness. It is said that on the 100th day, when he was composing the last Dashakan, where he recites the Keshadi Pada Varnanam, he describes the Lord from head to toe with utmost devotion and bhakti. He's supposed to have had a dazzling vision of the Lord himself and he's cured of his ailment. So the Parayanam of Narayanam possesses the power of healing afflictions, both mental and physical. So that is the greatness of chanting Narayanam. Harion. Thank you, Dr. Sandhya, for introducing this prayer from the Narayan Narayaniyam. Sadashiva Samarambham Shankaracharya Madhyamam Asmadacharya Pariyantam Vande Guru Paramparam Om. Today is a very significant day for all of us in Param Vedanta as we come to the concluding session of Disha. When we started this a little over one year ago, it was an intention to be able to study the Gita once again, with a clear intent to see what is that we can take home from the Gita. And it has been a great exercise for all of us, and I hope it has been a useful exercise for all those who have participated in this program, uh, to see what is that we have studied. In this last shloka, the Charama shloka, which we will be seeing today, Sri Krishna tries to condense the essence of his message. Uh, and this shloka can be a little confusing because on the surface, it looks like a very simple and a very direct shloka. But then with the help of Adi Shankara's commentary, it becomes a very, very meaningful verse altogether. As we conclude another of these exercises of going through Vedantic texts, particularly the Bhagavad Gita about four times, we need to be very clear, why are we studying Vedanta? Why are we studying our scriptures? Is it for any scholarship that I have studied the Gita, I have studied the Upanishads? Certainly not, that is not our objective as directed by our teachers. We are here to understand our true nature, our Swarupam. And each time we go through these exercises of Gita, Disha, the Upanishads and so on, we come across one teaching which is very clear that we are a mixture of body-mind and a very unique driving and living force which we call as Atma or the infinite aspect which is always there. And because it is infinite and it is all-pervading and something so huge and because it cannot move, it does not do anything. So we call that as akarta. And that which is akarta also is abhokta. Spiritual wisdom is to be able to identify with my infinite, all-pervading, true nature and use my body-mind only for purposes of transaction and to be always clear that this body-mind is only a temporary structure which I use to interact with all the temporary aspect of the world. That means I'm clear about my satyatvam, my true nature, or atma satya or brahma satya. Everything, including my body, mind, is not so real, and therefore I am not going to invest too much on this. This understanding enough, and this enough understanding, which happens at a mental level, is enough to give us freedom while we are living. What kind of freedom this is? As body, we still require various requirements. The body requires food, water, clothing, shelter. So there can be no question of physical independence whatsoever. But Jivan Mukti means a change in my perspective towards myself, a change towards all the difficulties that I encounter in my life. And Jivan Mukti means three things. One means that the presence or absence of any object, any person, any situation in the world will not affect me. 
I am independent of anything and everything in the world. By myself, I am Purna. I am complete. I don't need any object, any person, any situation to make me complete. I am Purnamada Purnamidam. And finally, because of my understanding of my true nature, I have attained to what is called Samatvam. That the ups and downs in my life are not going to affect me so much as emphasized by our teacher. Our first reaction from a Vyavahara difficult situation is what? But internally to myself, I say, so what? I will be able to handle it. So again, to conclude, what is the objective of our study? We have jnanam. What we need is jnana nishta. That means even in the most difficult, emotionally upsetting situations, this spiritual wisdom is going to be there with me. Our teacher says, knowledge, if it is properly seated in our minds, is not going to be altered by any emotionally upset situations. For example, 2 plus 2 is 4 in every situation. So to Vedanta Vijnana Sumishtitartha. Now, where are we? We have got Jnanam. About that, we are clear. We have done enough of all our exercises to know our true nature. The question is, I need to work from Jnanam to Jnana Nishta. I have Jnanam, but I don't seem to get the benefit of Jnanam. There must be some block. There is some Pratibandha. That is why, although we have got this knowledge, it is called Sa Pratibandha Jnanam. That means we still need to do a little more exercise. We have gone a long way. It is like a person who graduates from medicine. We have given them an MBBS degree and sometimes even maybe a postgraduate degree. But while they are in the training, they are always under supervision. They are not yet graduated to be by themselves. Now is the time that we need, we have got the knowledge that we need to be able to internalize this knowledge. And that will be our next exercise. Our next exercise is going to be the study of another text called Tripti Deepa. This is a masterpiece of Sri Vidya Ranya Swami. And in Tripti Deepa, we have 297 verses discussing one verse from the Brihadarine Kokumishad. It says, At Atmanam ched vijaniyat ayamasmiti purushaha himichan kasya kamaya shariram amusvam jvaret. In so many ways, I see the verse as identical to sarva dharman parityagnya mamekam sharanam brajam. Because in both these verses, sarva dharman parityagnya. Now, once you have understood your true nature, there is nothing to do, there is no way to go. And that is exactly like Shariram Anuswam Jwari. There is nothing that I need to accomplish for my. I have Kimichan Kasya Kamaya. There is nothing to do. There is nowhere to go. When the Purushaha, the individual in me, knows I am Asmiti very clearly, Vijaniya, that I am none other than Asmi. More details about how to be part of us with. Uh, we will be able to share with our subsequent classes. Uh, I want you to be in touch so that we will now proceed from Jnana to Jnana Nishta. To do the honors of the concluding session will none other be Dr. Ahalya. Uh, Dr. Ahalya, please. Namaste. Thank you, sir. Sri Guru Pyo Namaha. The 18th chapter is a recap chapter. It is the Upasamhara Sankshepa. It is also called the Tadeka Sharanata Yoga. The entire discourse is revised and in the end, the great proclamation for all mankind comes up through this verse. Sarva Dharman Parityajya Mamekam Sharanam Braja Aham Tvam Sarva Pape Pyo Moksha Ishyami Mashuchaha. This is the most important verse of today's Disha and we shall see in, to this in the further shlokas. As already understood, 18th chapter is the summary and four times it has already been summarized so far. 
The first summarization happens between 18.1 to 18.17, and the second one from 18.18 to 18.40. The third one subsequently from the 41st to 62nd shloka, and the final summarization happens between 63 and 66, more so in the 65th and the 66th shlokas. Till now, from 2.11, the second chapter, 11th shloka, all necessary knowledge has been given to Arjuna. And from now on, all the decision should be his own, is Krishna's wish. His choice of path should not be made due to compulsion or as an act of courtesy. Arjuna's mindset was initially ruled by compassion, born out of natural ignorance and not out of uh, wisdom. It was not a determination backed by his intelligent appraisal. Krishna says, any task, however well intended and laudable, should be in consonance with buddhi or intellect. This is why in the forthcoming verses, Krishna's final words do not have the import of command or the form of ordainment of fate. They provide a great opportunity to Arjuna to be guided by his own free will and intellect and to analyze the situation, Vimrishya, as he says in the shloka, he has to deliberate and finally do as per his free will. Iti te jnana makhyatam guhyat guhyataram maya vimrushya itad asheshena yathet chasi tathakuru. Do as you wish. So Arjuna, you have the intellect, you have made your decisions. Now be responsible for your sadhana, for your action, and don't blame anyone is what Krishna is telling him. Since there is no uniform spiritual advice possible, depends on the student, on the teacher, on the need and situation, shravanam for some uh, karma, japa for others. So what Arjuna was given was this great knowledge, which is time and again mentioned as guhya. And Krishna prepares the next one, sir. Krishna prepares to repeat his teaching of the greatest secret yet again. Sarva guhya tamam bhuyaha shrunume paramam vachaha ishto sime dridamiti tato vakshyami tehitam. In fact, the word guhya, guhya tara and guhya tama in the comparative and superlative degrees appear many times in Bhagavad Gita. In the 63rd, 64th verse here, in the 76th verse later, and also elsewhere we have studied uh, Raja Vidya, Raja Guhya Yoga, etc. Why is this a secret? The knowledge given here is not common knowledge, but that of the ultimate reality. It is not easy to understand, but for a proper Guru Upadesha and the Shastra uh, Patana. The preparedness of the student may not be adequate. There may be no devotion. There may be no aspiration also. In fact, verse 66 actually will tell us why it is Guhya Tara and Guhya Tama. Because the difference we see between the actual meaning of the verse and the implied meaning of the verse is immense. The difference is immense here. And it, it can never be grasped without the Bhashya and the Guru Upadesha. Therefore, Krishna repeatedly says this is sacred knowledge and secret knowledge. Since you are very dear to me, I am telling this again and again. And I am telling this for your good. This is what any good friend would do. And Arjuna's friend, philosopher and guide was after all Krishna. So like a mother who repeatedly checks on her child before a major event, Krishna affectionately asks Arjuna to listen to what Krishna is saying and summarizes the Gita yet again. The next slide, sir. The fourth and the final summarization comes through in these two shlokas. The 65th shloka, which conveys the karma yoga part, and the 66th shloka, which conveys the jnana yoga part. Swami, the next shloka, this next slide, sir. Swami Paramarthananda ji explains this verse, the 65th verse, as the summary of karma yoga. He says, never take the religious aspects lightly. He says, it, you, have, you are a, a spiritually inclined religious sadhaka. So religious aspects and discipline are very important, as he explains. Daily prayer at a fixed time and the study of scriptures, the study of Gita in this case, is a sine qua non for the ultimate goal. 
in fact he quotes bajavovindam geyam geeta nama sahasram dheyam shripati roopa majasram such an important sadhana to realize the ultimate the 65th verse man mana bhava mat bhaktah mat yaji maam namaskur maame vaishyasi satyam te prati jane priyosi me so man mana bhava become my devotee keep me in your mind always god as the god enters our life as a companion mat bhaktah bhava may you become my devotee and then you become one of the purusharthas you become one of the goals that one has mat yaji bhava you worship me convert all the daily regular activities into a god surrendering activity into worship maam namaskuru may you surrender unto me and if you do this maam eva eshyasi you will verily reach the goal of life which is me this is what he says satyam this is eternally valid in fact it is also a form of bhakti that he is trying to rupa satu asmin parama prema rupa is the definition of bhakti as in narada bhakti sutra be steadfast in your religious life is what he is saying parama is an adjective which means that the subject stands apart all by itself unmixed with anything else devotion and ego are mutually repellent where there is ego there is no bhakti and where there is genuine bhakti there could be no ego so dropping the body mind identification is hinted in the shloka which is elaborated in the next verse the next slide sir the charama shloka the 66th shloka is the final teaching shloka that krishna gives and therefore this is called the charama shloka it is also called the sharanagati shloka as the word sharanam is uh, mentioned here and gnana yoga is implied and this is probably the most confusing shloka sarva dharman parityajya or as we already heard the actual meaning of the words is like through gnana karma sanyasa may you have jeevatma paramatma aikya aparoksha gnanam and i shall reveal to you who has such aikya gnanam that you are free from punya and papa be free from sorrow this is what uh, the verse actually says let us understand how the next slide sir in fact the bhagavad pada commentary for this verse runs into 12 paragraphs a huge Uh, i mean it takes pages and pages he questions he answers he brings up ob- objections and further answers to bring out the import of this particular shloka this shloka can be divided into two parts the first line talking about the gnana yoga and the second line talking about the gnana phalam sarva dharman parityajya like if we look at that pada the word dharma here implies sarva dharma adharman and again it further goes to say sarva punya and papa sarva karman punya and papa so when he says sarva dharman parityajya you disidentify yourself from everything that you so think the body mind complex to which dharma and karma papa and punya are attached that needs to be dropped so sarva dharman parityajya this indicates the tvam padartha lakshartha and then comes the most important one ma ekam sharanam vraja two words here that are important ekam ekam is advitiyam advayam there is none other and vraja vraja is to reach to go out to approach but here there is no going out it is just that we need to drop the identity identification with the body mind complex so drop the uh, dharma dharma punya papa and then just Uh, drop that identification and then maam ekam sharanam so you come to me is what he said many times in bhagavad gita we hear the words like maam aham maya me mat mai such first person pronouns are seen and it refers to the arupa ishvara and we need should not mistake it to krishna the avatar who is actually speaking so maam ekam sharanam vraja this brings in the tat padartha lakshana so when a teacher says tatvam asi by now the student should be able to say aham brahmasmi so this is the gnana yoga conveyed through this particular line the second line brings in the gnana phalam aham tvam sarva papebhyo mokshayishyami masu masuchah 
ಸರ್ವ ಪಾಪೇಭ್ಯೋ ಇತಿ ಸರ್ವ ಧರ್ಮಾಧರ್ಮ ಬಂಧನ ರೂಪೇಭ್ಯ ಮೋಕ್ಷಯಿಷ್ಯಾಮಿ ಸೇಸ್ತಿ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ ಭಾಷ್ಯ ಸೊ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ರಿಲೀವ್ ಯು ಫ್ರಮ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಪಾಪಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಲೀಫ್ ಬಾಂಡೇಜಸ್ ಮಾ ಶುಚ ಹಿ ಟಾಕ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಫಲಂ ದಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಮೋರ್ ಶೋಕ ಶೋಕ ನಿವೃತ್ತಿ ಇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಹಿ ಸೇ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಗೀತಾ ಸಾರ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಇಸ್ ವೈಸ್ ಮೆನ್ ಡು ನಾಟ್ ಗ್ರೀವ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ ಸರ್ ಮಾ ಶುಚ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಶುಚ ಇಸ್ ಶೋಕಂ ಮಾ ಕಾರ್ಷಿ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಡು ನಾಟ್ ಗ್ರೀವ್ ಶೋಕ ನಿವೃತ್ತಿ ಇಸ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಜ್ಞಾನೇನ ಎವ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಫಲಂ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಮೋರ್ ಸಾರೋ ಅಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ we do not entertain any more grief in fact the word nanu shochanti panditaha from the second chapter 11th verse the word pandita actually means panda atma vishaya buddhi yesham dehi panditaha they are the panditas who know about the atma vishaya so he completes the loop from second chapter 11th shloka where he started the first advice to arjuna saying nanu shochanti panditaha and completes the loop through this saying ma shuchah no more griefs that you have to entertain the next slide sir what is the sharanam here the sharanam is not a matter of karma it is not a matter of doing anything it's not a verb that is here it is a matter of knowing we know that this is this is how it should be anyatha sharanam nasti tvameva sharanam mama tasmat karunya bhavena a daily shloka that he say such a surrender is beyond all dharma it is in fact adi dharma it is not subject to external measures of logic or inquiry it is a subjective experience of understanding of letting go of this identification with the body mind complex in conclusion the next slide sir the only permanent weapon against sorrow is wisdom it is the wisdom of the in the bhagavad gita of the bhagavad gita it is the wisdom of the upanishads it is the advaita vedanta many many times through gita we have heard jnana devahi kaivalyam sa vidya ya vimuchyate from the upanishad tameva vidwan amrita ih bhavati nanya panta ayanaya vidyate sharanagati here is jnanam which is nothing but the moksha with this krishna completes the teaching part or in the bhagavad gita and comes to the last part of it these are the winding up verses the next slide sir which is called the adhyayana sampradana vidhi every shastra has its own method of teaching learning and studying so this is the adhyayana sampradana vidhi that he is trying to give and what are the qualities of a guru what are the qualities of a shishya and the others we see in the next few verses idam te na tapaskaya na bhakta bhaktaya kadachana never ever give it to somebody who does not have the discipline who is does not have bhakti the reverence or devotion to god and guru na cha shrushave vachyam na cha ma yogya suyati don't give it to someone who doesn't have the entire desire, desire for knowledge the intense desire for knowledge or anasuyave one uh, asuyave one who has a critical mind or give it to one who is anasuya with a non critical mind that is krishna clearly tells us don't give this unasked for or don't push your religious and spiritual views on others who are not ready for it and who may not be interested in it the next shloka continues uh, further talking giving us the reassurance to take up the study of gita ye idam paramam guhyam yet again he talks the word guhyam ಯ ಇದಂ ಪರಮಂ ಗುಹ್ಯಂ ಮತ್ ಭಕ್ತೇಶ್ವಿಧಾಸ್ಯತಿ ಅಭಿಧಾಸ್ಯತಿ ಇಸ್ ಟು ಇಸ್ ದ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ಮತ್ ಭಕ್ತೆ ಅಭಿಧಾಸ್ಯತಿ ಟು ಮೈ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಹೂ ಎವರ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಟೀಚ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಮಯಿ ಪರಂ ಕೃತ್ ಮಾಮೇ ವೈಶ್ಯತ್ ವೈಶ್ಯತ್ ಅಸಂಶಯ ಇನ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಟ್ವೈಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಟು ಟೆಲ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಎಲಿಜಿಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಟು ಕಲ್ಟಿವೇಟ್ ದ ಗೀತಾ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಥ್ರೂ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ so abhidhasyati one who teaches is uh, the most uh, person i love the most is what he says and asamshaya he will reach me alone eshyati he will come to me asamshaya without any doubt the next slide sir krishna talks of the three kinds of people who are dear to him it is the the dearest is of course the teacher of bhagavad gita sir the next slide 
the dearest of course is the teacher of bhagavad gita and the student is no less he likes him also not just an interested student even a casual listener he says will get some benefit out of it so in fact we have heard of many instances where people who went to listen casually have come out becoming one of the uh, profound teachers of vedanta so all uh, this is possible is what krishna is saying the next one sir and what type of knowledge is this he talks that it is secret it is sacred and with what attitude do we learn he again talks of this reverence therefore the term bhakti was used twice in the shloka with reverence reverence and what is the outcome obviously moksha or liberation the next shloka the 69th one nacha tasman manushyeshu kaschin me priyakrittamaha bhavita nacha me tasmat anya priyataro bhuvi mat bhakteshu abidasyati one who is able to teach so this is the praise for those who share this teaching somebody who shares this is the priya, is the dearest to him bhuvi in this entire world sati saptami is what he is saying that he dehi is the dearest one to me more beloved to me priyakrit tamaha so na kashti there is no one who equals that so this is to extol the role of a bhagavad gita teacher and pranams to all our teachers who have taught us this uh, knowledge the 70th shloka the next one sir the next one sir the 70th shloka is again a very important one probably swami chinmayananda ji must have picked up the gita gnana yagna the name is gnana yagna gita gnana yagna based on this shloka adhyeshyate chaye ya imam dharmyam samvadam avayoh avayoh between us dharmyam this sacred uh, samvada whoever listens to this samvada gnana yagnena tenaham ishtah syami nematihi this is my firm conclusion i am worshiped thus worshiped in the form of teaching of this wisdom the samvada that took between took place between you and me is what krishna is saying in fact in a yagna the fire is in you in this gnana yagna agnana becomes the ahuti shraddha is the taila and gnana is the phalam so the 70th shloka concludes that whoever even listens to this gets the benefit of it and this is the greatest of the yagnas possible the next slide sir the next one sir shraddhavan anasuyascha shrunyadapi yo naro sopi muktah shuban lokan prapnoyat punyam karmana he says that is the benefit of studying the bhagavad gita according to krishna is explained yet again so he says you can get everything you can be freed from suffering is what he says and the next slide sir so nahi gnanena satrasham he has often mentioned this pavitra meha vidyate shraddha and anasuya these are two important things that he says are required to uh, study this the next one sir next one sir. next one sir 72 kachit dieta chutam parta tvayai kagrena chetasa kachit gnana sammoha pranashtaste dananjaya here krishna is asking him and uh, like a very sincere teacher he is asking whether he grasped the contents of the shastra and uh, sammoha the word here means aviveka so have you come out of that is what krishna is asking to which arjuna in the 73rd shloka says arjuna uvacha nashto mohah smritir labdva tvat prasadan mayachuta stitosmi gata sandeha karishye vachanam tavah the bhagavad pada commentary talks for nashto mohah as agnana ja samasta samsara anartha hetu so anartha hetu is because of agnana and arjuna says yes my delusion is gone the next slide sir and i am uh, i have the smriti i my moha is gone and then stitosmi gata sandeha no more doubts karishyasye vachanam tava and i shall do as ordained by you the next slide sir benefit of the shastrik studies atma gnana removes self delusion world delusion and god delusion god delusion that god is separate from me 
and no point on this journey can we lose in our hold on ishvara anugraha swami paramarthananda ji often reminds us about this the next shloka sir sanjaya starts talking about here saying ityaham vasudevasya parthasya cha mahatmanah samvadamimam ashrausham adbhutam romaharshanam so sanjaya is extremely excited thrilled saying this i heard this sacred dialogue and not from anybody but from the lord himself and it's so wonderful that even my physical body can feel the thrill of this the next shloka sir vyasa prasada chutavan etad bhuhya maham para param yogam yogeshwara krishna sakshat tataya swayam the word swayam is i got to get this not through parampara but from the lord directly yoga here or means the very grantha the gita grantha itself is the yoga is what he say sanjaya says i could hear this dialogue only because of vyasa's uh, blessing towards me by the divya chakshu that i got i feel very blessed for having heard this and why did arjuna alone get the uh, teaching only because he said shishyasteham shadima tvam prapanna he had said that in the second chapter that he sought for this very sincerely sanjaya concludes in the 76th verse rajan samsmrutya samsmrutya samvadam imam adbhutam he is ecstatic he says it's my good fortune the more i think i feel thrilled and finally says which was the chapter he liked the most for which sanjaya says it was the uh, sir we could move couple of slides uh, and he says it was the vishwarupa darshana that he liked the most तच्च संस्मृत्य संस्मृत्य रूपमत्यद्भुतम हरे हे विस्मयो मे महान राजन दृश्यामि च पुनः पुनः आई कीप लुकिंग एट दैट विश्वरूप अगेन एंड अगेन ऑफ दैट लिमिटलेस वन एंड व्हेन आई थिंक ऑफ दिस आई फील वेरी थ्रिल्ड एंड आई फील स्टंड आई एंजॉय अगेन एंड अगेन संजय कंक्लूड्स द होल भगवत गीता इन दिस लास्ट वर्स एज यत्र योगेश्वर कृष्णो यत्र पार्थो धनुर्धर तत्र श्रीर विजयो भूतिर्द्रवाणी तिर्म तिर्म मम गीता टीचिंग इज टाइमलेस लॉर्ड कृष्ण इज द ब्रह्म विद्या गुरु अर्जुन इज एनी ऑफ अस इन फैक्ट अर्जुन इज रेफर्ड टू एज पार्थ एंड पार्थ इज द पार्थिवांश एंड वी आर ऑल द पार्थिव शरीर इज देयरफॉर इट कुड मीन एनी ऑफ अस हु सीक दिस नॉलेज एंड वेयर एवर कृष्ण एंड अर्जुन आर देयर टुगेदर श्रीर विजयो भूतिर परमानेंट वेल्थ विक्ट्री प्रॉस्पेरिटी हैप्पीनेस जस्टिस all these are there the primary benefit of course is moksha and the secondary could be any of the material gain iti shrimad bhagavad gita su upanishad su brahma vidyayam yoga shastre shri krishna arjuna samvade moksha sanyasa yogo nam ashtadashodhyaya hari om thank you sir thank you very much dr halya for giving us a nice summary in the concluding session of disha Incidentally, Dr. Ahilya has recently taken over as the Vice Chancellor of the Karnataka Sanskrit Vishwa Vidyalaya. As you will see in this topic, Arjuna has been transformed, Sanjay has been transformed. There is one other person who is listening, and as we see, Dhritarashtra had the grace of being able to listen to the Bhagavad Gita directly, but he did not change any way. In between, there are so many of us who had the chance to listen. to the bhagavad gita not directly but through our gurus after so many centuries and let us ponder over this week to see how much our world view about ourselves have been transformed by the bhagavad gita and in the next class we will have a concluding class where we will look at the greatness of the bhagavad gita to see if we have understood part of the disha has always been a quiz and this time the quiz will be conducted by shiv kumar Shiv Kumar, please. Hari Om, welcome to one and all. Now, coming to the quiz, the first uh, portion is on Bhagavad Gita. Uh, the first question: Iti the nana makya tham. Uh, uh, the verse is there. Sorry. Choose the right option. Question one: Having imparted the most secret knowledge of to Arjuna, Krishna tells Arjuna to. the answer is to do as he likes after analysis that's right next question in the verse 
choose the right option. After concluding the teachings, Krishna is saying in this verse, I am repeating, Bhu Yaha, because? Uh, because it is of, because of compassion, he is taking refuge and he is also responsible. So all of the above. That's right. Next question, sir. In the verse 65, choose the right option for this question. An active God-centered lifestyle in which I contribute to the society is? Karma Yoga. Perfect. Next question. In the same uh, uh, shloka, Krishna says in this verse, Mam Eva Esyasi, you will reach the goal of life, which is myself, moksha. Not directly, but coming through Jnana Yoga. What are the steps he describes to reach this goal? Yeah, here he the steps are, the first one is Manmana Bhava. That is, you have to keep your mind on me. Let your life be God-centered. The next one, Mad Bhaktya Bhava. That is, you develop a devotion, bhakti towards me, and madhyaji bhava, and you worship me, and maam namaskaro. That is, you surrender onto me. Perfectly correct. Thank you. The next question. In uh, verse 66, choose the right option. A withdrawn, knowledge-centered lifestyle will be called? Uh, Gnana Yoga. Thank you. Next question, sir. In verse 66, mm -hmm. say true or false. Sarva Dharmam Paritagya, Shankaracharya says that the word dharma in this context must include adharma also. Yeah, very true. Next question. It's true. Thank you. What are the four qualifications required for Gita study as per this verse? It's already highlighted. Yeah, it is one is tapas, that is discipline. So discipline here is the religious discipline and bhakti, that is devotion to God. And shushrusha, generally shushrusha, shushrusha means it is service. But here it is a deep interest in the study of the Gita and anasuyaha, which is a non-critical mind. Perfectly correct. This was well explained by Dr. Yeah. Ahalya. Thank you. Next question, sir. Verse 68. In the above shloka, Krishna is glorifying three types of people by saying that all these groups of people are dear to him. Who are they? First one is he is really glorifying Gita Acharya. Second one is a Gita student. And the third one is a listener of Gita. Perfectly correct. This was well depicted in the slide too. Thank yes. you. Yes. Next question. In verse 69, whom does Krishna place as the greatest and dearest person? The Gita Acharya. The Gita teacher. That's true. That's true. In the same verse or shloka, why does Krishna give so much importance to the Gita teaching? Uh, because uh, the self-knowledge is passed on to, through, through this teaching of Gita. And uh, the perpetuation of the knowledge of Dharma, or Harmony, whatever it is. It is uh, through this That's teaching it is possible. That's right. Because of perpetuation of this teaching alone is the perpetuation of Dharma, perpetuation of Harmony and perpetuation of Peace. Thank you. Next question, sir. Now, in the two verses, there are highlighted portions. Lord Krishna divides the students into two categories. In this Sishya Stuti verse, what are they? One is a committed student of Gita, and the other one is just a listener, a casual student. That's right. Going to the 13th question in verse 72. What are the two questions Krishna asks Arjuna in this verse? Here Krishna asks Arjuna 
did you listen to me properly it was it with, uh, did you have focus and the other one is has your delusion because of ignorance has completely gone perfectly good correct thank you in verse 73 what does the word smriti imply smriti here implies knowledge but generally it is memory but here it is knowledge that is true normally and the word knowledge, is is the... knowledge always is uh, self when it is in this uh, context it is self knowledge which is jivatma paramatma aikyam that is true uh, normally the word smriti is memory in this context smriti means knowledge Whenever we say knowledge in Vedanta, remember it is Jivatma, Paramatma, Aikya, Nana. Thank you. Next, sir. In verse 75, why is Sanjaya expressing gratitude to Vyasacharya? Yeah, he is expressing gratitude because only because of Vyasacharya, he could have that Divya Chakshu and he could uh, receive the uh, knowledge of Gita. That's true. Because of Vyasacharya, Sanjaya was blessed with Divya Chakshu and therefore blessed enough to receive indirectly the Gita teaching. Sanjaya could not only know everything happening in the battlefield, but also knew what was happening in the mind of Arjuna. Next, sir. When Sanjaya says in this verse, when I look back into the entire teaching, what strikes my mind most is Hare Atyabhutam Rupam, the wonderful Rupam of the Lord. Which chapter is he referring to? He is referring to Vishwarupa Darshana chapter. That's very correct. Thank you. In this verse, here Sanjaya says, Gita teaching is alive even now and at all times the Gita teaching is alive and what is the proof? The proof is we are all studying Gita, we are all students of Gita, learning Gita. So the class itself is a proof. Very, very correct. Our class is the proof of the glory of Gita. Thank you. In uh, verse 78, what are the benefits of the Gita? Uh, it says Shri, that is wealth, Vijayaha is success, and Bhuti is prosperity, and Niti, that is, the, that is justice. And Moksha is the primary benefit which is implied here. Correct. That is true. Thank you. In the same verse, can you fill the blanks? Wherever Lord Krishna is remembered, and, and wherever Arjuna is remembered, by the law of association, it will bring in the teachings of Gita. Right. The wisdom or the teachings of Gita. In Yatra, yatra Partho Dhanurdaraha, Dhanurdaraha means wielding the bow, and bow here represents? Bow here represents, um, I'm not very sure. Swadharma Anushthanam. Okay, thank you. Thank you. What are the fundamental laws of Vedanta? I am the Druk and I'm never the Drushyam. That is, I'm always the observer, not the observed. And uh, I'm the experiencer. Just one minute. Right? Sir? Sir? Hello. Yes. We, we skipped the Tattva Bodha yeah. in the presentation. Should we have the quiz of Tattva Bodha? No, we, we, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have the quiz. We'll have it. Hmm? Then uh, I will redo this, sir. All right. Okay. We can start from here. Yes, sir. In uh, Tattva Bodha, coming to Atma, the fourth factor, what are the fundamental laws of Vedanta? Uh, one is I am always the druk and never the drushya. That is, I am always the observer. That is the witness, never the observed. And second one is I am the experiencer. That is, I am free from all the attributes. 
of the experienced objects. Very true. That's perfectly correct. Next question. What are the important features of Atma? Atma, one is, it is Ekaha, that is, it is, there's no duality there. And it is Nitya, it is always there. It is Nirguna, that is, it doesn't have any attributes. It's an independent, and uh, Swatantraha, it is an independent principle. And it is Chaitanya Swarupam, it is an age of consciousness. Perfect. Chaitanya Swarupam, Atma is the nature of consciousness. Swatantra, an independent principle. Nirguna, it does not have any attributes belonging to matter. Nitya, unconditioned by time. Sarvagataha, not conditioned by space. Ekaha, if Atma is one consciousness principle behind all the bodies, Atma has to be only one, even though bodies are many. So yeah. Atma is Ekaha. Atma is Advaitaha. Atma is Advitiya, non-dual. Sir, next question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vani. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Friends, I seek your attention for an important announcement. With the grace of our Paramagurus, our Bhagavad Gita verse by verse and Disha series is concluding with one more session. That is with our YouTube premiere on Monday, 30th June, 23. After this, we shall have our Guru Purnima session. But before commencing study of the wonderful Kathopanishad, our Paramagurus, Swami Paramarthananda, Anubhavanandaji, Brahmaji, Shankar Bhartiji, Chidhanandaji, bestow spiritual knowledge freely as per our ancient traditions or parampara. And in return, the Shishyas offer Guru Dakshina to express gratitude. Keeping with this tradition of Sanatana Dharma, we from Param Vedanta are desirous of offering collective Guru Dakshina to all our Paramagurus on Guru Purnima. We humbly invite your voluntary contribution with an assurance that the entire amount collected towards this shall be offered to our Gurus as gratitude from the Param Vedanta family. Kindly take a picture of the bank details displayed in the slide for your reference. I call your attention to the Google link provided in the information. This is for you to update the contribution details on Google Forms for us to not only account the contribution, but also to issue a receipt. I would like to thank all those who have already contributed and request them to update the details on Google Forms. Thank you, <coughs> sorry. Thank you, Dr. Sandhya Ravi, for the profound shloka. Srimati, Dr. Ahalya, for your excellent presentation, supported by wonderful slides. Dr. Vasumati, Dr. Uh, and Srimati Vaniji, for the educative teaching quiz. Hearty thanks to Dr. Timopai Gdesa. Most importantly, friends, Thank you for your active participation. Friends, remember to log in on Friday, 30th June, 2023 at 6.45 p.m. sharp for our closing or concluding class on both the verse by verse Gita and Disha series. Important topics like the greatness of Gita, impact of Gita in daily life, recommended sadhanas, and much more will be the topics of this never-to-be-missed session. Dhanyavada and Shubharatri. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamevavashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari hi Om Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari hi Om